favorites coming into this at the uh, top of the broadcast, but what storylines stand out to you as we get set to race? Well, I think I'm excited to see how this man right here, actually, Charles Hicks, races. You know, we haven't seen a lot from him since this summer. He ran phenomenally this summer, um, setting new PBs and, and just getting excited about being at that next level. But the NAZ Elite team has a great team. You know, they're all, they've, a lot of these guys have seen each other at the NCAA level, and now they're, you know, sponsored athletes and they're running maybe in different races than we're used to seeing them. Uh, you know, I think that it's just a great, Great field. Wesley Kip too out there, as you see. Edwin Kurgot is back. I mean, Olin Hacker raced here last year. There's a lot of really great names and a really great runners in this race. Yeah, I love the smile by Hacker as he was fist bumping his uh, his teammates here. And that, you know, again, is something you don't get a lot in your professional chapter of your career is that team dynamic that so many of these athletes enjoyed during their uh, collegiate heck all the way back to their their high school campaigns. As we work our way down, you see a mixture of folks who are both with teams and in some cases like Charles Hooks, Hicks here as individuals as well as the uh, Texas-based Born to Run group. Some high schoolers towing the line here for Born to Run as well, just coming off the end of their championship season in high school cross country, but everybody ready to Make those bright shoes a little bit darker by the end of the five <laughs> loops here. The cross champs getting set to run. This will be the Brooks Men's 8K, the 2023 cross champs set to race. So five loops of this course, once again, same distance as the women just ran. A little bit more traffic to begin with here, Carrie, as the uh, men's field is just a little bit larger. But already we see figuring prominently in this lead group some of the uh, folks from Hoka NAZ Elite trying to sweep the team title here as the uh, women came away with victory just a few minutes ago. And Wesley Kiptu doing what Wesley Kiptu does, going out to the lead early. Yeah, some of these athletes, their their strategy never changes. But I think it's what it's cool is when it works, it works. You know, they, they it takes time sometimes to get to get it all situated as a pro. But you gotta you gotta go with what's worked in the past sometimes, and that's what we see. Edwin Kerr got going with him right now, and behind him, Ahmed Muhammad, who's been having a great 2023 campaign alongside him another guy with a great year so far that's Charles Hicks who you talked about as well but Ahmed Muhammad you know eighth at the USA championships at 5,000 meters then got a chance to wear the kit at the world championships that road race in uh, Riga where he or sorry yeah the 5k at the world championship yep. runner up at the USA 5k champs in New York you know coming off an all-American career at Florida State. And, you know, a lot of these, and again, this is kind of the interesting part of each and every Olympic cycle too, Carrie, is we're seeing those transitions, those who are kind of gearing up for their first big moment on the global stage as it relates to a race to qualify for an Olympic Games. And, you know, you got all these veterans who are saying, not so fast, youngsters. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think a lot of these athletes you know, they all respect each other, but they want they want to win. And so if you are a little bit older, if you're a veteran, you kind of want to make sure that you hold your own. And as we see the vet here, Edwin Kurgot, you know, he's just a little bit older than, than the man right next to him, Wesley Kiptu, but they know each other so well, both from Iowa State. But nice that Edwin Kurgot finally has that pro contract. I know for years he wanted one. He's so fast. And for a long time, it was like, when is somebody going to pick him up? They did. They picked him up this year, and that has to give him a little bit of extra pep. Adrian Vilskut of Hoka NAZ Elite. Kind of blazing a trail and rewriting the South African record books this year. He had national records at 3,000, 5,000, and 10,000 meters. Also another ex-Florida State guy like Ahmed Mohammed, so uh, a lot of familiarity maybe training up at Flagstaff where you, uh, you, you're continuing to train with some of your, uh, your college teammates. Yeah, what I like about him is that he's had a hard 10K on the roads this year. He just ran 
a 10K on October 14th. So he's got that pain of running a hard race. And so that might be, you know, sort of a, a card that he can play today that a lot of these athletes haven't done that yet. They haven't really hurt. Yes, it, you can hurt in practice, but a race is a whole different ball game. So a different race unfolding here on the men's side versus what we saw on the women's side where we still had about 16, 17 women in that league group as they hit the uh, first mile split. Here we're already down to six men as they are going to make their turn for that start-finish return. Again, five laps or loops of this course at Camp Mabry Park. Same distance as we saw for the women, 8,000 meters. That's a hard turn, though, as they now work their way back towards the uh, start-finish line. And at that point, we'll get our first split of the race. Kind of see how the pacing goes here. The women started out pretty cautiously and kept getting faster in each successive mile. The men, at least the leaders, have decided, let's take this out fast, and we'll see if it can hold. 4.25.7, the opening mile for Wesley Kiptu. As you see, Hicks, Kurgat, Vilskut, Muhammad, and David Ribich of the Nike Union Athletic Club. He's doing a solo effort here. The former standout from Western Oregon. Racing here along with Charles Hook Hicks as kind of an, an individual racing opportunity coming down to Austin to kind of see where his fitness is at in the midst of that training block. Yeah, it's always interesting to see these track athletes come out here too on the grass. But one thing that I do love about what we're seeing up front here, Wesley Kipto, you know, he ran that, that Chicago Marathon early October and he ran really well, 210. But he also was coming off of running fast at Houston, the half last winter, running right at the one hour mark. So he's just, he's trying to see what is his event. And Obviously, we know he's so good on the grass, but where is he going to fall? Is he going to be the Rhodes guy, or is he going to go back to the track, which he's clearly very good at as well? So just just love the different variety that that man can break. Oh, you see the spreads for first and second in that team race in Hoka NAZ Elite. Pretty rock-solid effort to get only four athletes score. So Olin Hacker, who's now about six, seven seconds back of this lead group of five, constituting that fourth runner in Hoka NAZ Elite's team makeup. Kiptu continues to look around, maybe wondering if somebody else might want to take the lead for a spell. He did Yeoman's work here in the early going as he has opened up a sizable lead. Ribich maybe finding that first mile a little bit faster than he expected as he is now running alone here in between the chase pack and the lead group as they work alongside these vintage aircraft at Camp Mabry Air Park on loop number two of five in the Brooks men's 8K. Paul, this man up front here, Edwin Kurgat, the defending champion from last year, he's been busy this last late, late summer, early fall. He ran Falmouth where he was third, he ran um, Beach to Beacon, he was fourth. Peachtree, he was fifth. You know, just back to back to back. He's so good at all of these these road races, and he's starting to really kind of find his way up front again. You know, it took a little bit of time to get there, but he's a 1308 guy on the track as well. So it's just really a uh, nice range as well for him. A little over seven minutes elapsed on the track or on the course here in Austin as Kurgat now in a leadership position. Hicks, Vilskut. Now Wesley Kiptu in the back of the pack, just kind of settling in, but you know, he's not in full contact with that quartet in front of him, needs to regain that contact. Ribich, Still out there in no man's land, but he hasn't lost ground necessarily to the leaders and the chase pack, which probably using him as the target right now, still hasn't been able to swallow him up. 
people watching right now, you know, just a little bit of difference in who's using the tangents, who's not, just spreading apart a little bit. But Charles Hicks, you know, when he was at Stanford, he raced so hard with Kai Robinson, who was just third at the NCAA championships. Those, those two, along with that entire team, really learned how to push each other. And it is different when you don't have your guys out here. Now, this is one of his first cross country races where he doesn't have his guys right by him. He's the only one in red out there right now. And he's got to figure out how to race on his own. But just a stellar athlete, Charles Hicks is. He was the NCAA cross country champion in 2022. But he too has seen some really fast races, 13-22, 27-40 on the track. He's a, he's a bright star, I think, for the future in, in distance running. 425 for the first mile, second mile, just a second slower. So the pace continues to be hot here in Austin with Kip2 back in front. Feels good. Kurgat, Hicks, and Muhammad. Well, Kip2 has always shown that he does not like to sit. That was one thing when he ran the marathon, I was wondering how he would do because he's a guy that likes to be up front. He likes to push the pace. That's how I like to race too. I didn't like to hear people around me. I didn't want to have other people dictating the race. And that's just naturally the kind of runner he is. And he's found himself up here time and time again, and he likes it. And that's what I think is so important is figuring out how you can win races, but also where you're most comfortable. And he's getting to this level now where he can be the one to lead and win. And it's fun to see that this is where his fitness is. He's, he's got confidence. You have to have confidence to be up there. Everyone safely over and through that little hay bale area that's added a little bit of intrigue, but haven't seen any of the athletes have too much trouble with them as they make their way down again by the Area Camp Mabry Air Park with all the uh, vintage aircraft. The uh, skies are getting a little bit brighter here. It was an early morning start for the community runners before the elite athletes got out onto the course. The uh, course holding up pretty well, though. Moisture in the area kind of made things a little wet to start. And as we catch them here from our static camera you can get a sense of kind of where everybody is in relation to each other still a group of five here at the front been pretty much that way from about the first mile as they went through the first mile in 425 second mile in 426 and hoka naz elite continues to lead the team race here vilskut now taking the lead for a moment Keeping my eye on Muhammad there in third. You know, he hasn't really touched the front yet. He's just been lurking. And that's kind of those ones that can be, or those are the athletes in these packs that can be dangerous. He hasn't really had to have the pressure of leading. He's kind of looking around and just seeing how everyone else is feeling. So I've got my eye on him, Paul. Almost single file here is there on the back half of this third of five loops in Austin, Texas. Great event added to the activities around the big conference down there each and every year, the running event. Let's check in now at the course with another update from our Des Linden. Des, what are the conditions like right now? So the uh, kind of cloudy overcast skies have turned into a proper rain now. And um, after the women's 8K, five laps on the course, it's a little bit more beat up. Kip2 in the early stages really looks like he's floating over the grass, but I expect it to just get softer and softer with the amount of participants on the course right now. Um, it's not a super challenging course. So beyond the hay bales, I think in the last lap, just this softness and muddiness is coming out on the course. And that's going to be another factor to keep an eye on. Yeah, thanks, Des, for that uh, update. You know, the conditions here, you know, are good for cross country, though, Carrie, as, as kind of Des mentioned, because this is kind of the last race of the uh, sequence of races here, you're not getting the uh, the best of this course, particularly as it is related to footing. And, and some of those turns where, you know, because they're digging in to make those turns pretty hard, the ground could be uh, pretty much undulating now. 
Yeah, I mean, bring it, right? That's what it's all about. We want it to be slick and muddy and snowy and all of that in cross country. And I think that's what most people like. So yeah, it can get a little dicey out there at times on those tight turns. But at the same time, I think, you know, keeping your own and, and staying on your feet, that's part of the game. So I think that the athletes, they don't even think about it. They're just getting through. Well, talking about bringing it, that third mile for Vilskut, 420. So the fastest mile of the race occurring at the conclusion of three loops of this course, just two mile loops remain. See the five men now in single file. Vilskut, Kurgat, Hicks there in third, Muhammad in fourth. And then Kiptu in the rear, trying to stay in contact with the leaders there. But see from the pictures that we bring you from that static camera, a little bit of a breakup now between the top four and the fifth as they hit the hay bales for the penultimate time. Yeah, those hay bales don't look like they're giving anyone any trouble there. They just they just skim right over them. But you know, one thing that Edwin Kerr got, the man in second there, the defending champ said, last year with a mile to go, he knew he had this in his bag. Like he knew it was his and he wanted that. He wanted to win here, kind of put himself back on the map. He had some injuries last year, but over the last year, it seems as if he's figured things out. Now he's made this move to a new team and he's he was coaching a little bit. Now he's not doing that anymore, I don't believe. I think he's just focusing on the run and. And he said, this is about where in the mo this moment in the race last year where he took charge and, and he knew it was his. I've got an inventive real-time real idea for that last loop that you take the three rows of hay bales and stack them on the first row and make <laughs> it a four stack high hay bale and see you in, in almost like boot camp at the uh, and, yes. and fitting that would be at a military base for that kind of race. So it gets harder every lap, just like the race does. <laughs> it's a progressive. Yes. Well, Kip Tu, give him credit. He looked a little haggard there for a while coming through those hay bales and was kind of losing traction with the top four, but he's not completely out of it yet, trying to stay in contact here as they make some of these twists and turns in the lower half of the course. Again, this is the fourth of Five loops of the course. Each one of these miles has been quick. They started at 425, ran the second mile in 426, the third mile in 420. But this group of five still within a second or so of each other as they come up on some of the runners that started with them on the course just 16 minutes ago, gearing up for what should be a very quick final lap and a race for a cross championship. I mean, all five of these guys look good. As you said, Kip has been off a little bit, but he still looks controlled. He still looks okay. And he's got his teammates up there, which I think is important to say, you know, when you know that your guys are there, you got to keep on grinding. You got to keep within contact. And that, that goes to a different part of the mindset when you're racing now. He maybe isn't feeling great. Maybe he's just kind of working himself through something, but he knows his guys are there, and that's going to give him the lift that he needs to have this a great finish. And so we'll have to see if he can hang on here. But Bill Scott looks great. I mean, he's right there. He hasn't even made a turn of the head. He's just been focused on what's in front of him. Look at that powerful stride that he has. It's compact, but yet real efficient. And I like how he looks, too, right now. Well, look at Kiptu taking a different tangent here. Comes up alongside and passes Ahmed Mohammed back into fourth place overall, but it's a trio right now that's beginning to turn the legs a little bit stronger as they see the finish line in sight, but that means it'll just be one more loop of the course to the finish line. Who will be the 2023 Brooks men's 8K champion here at the 2023 Cross Champs? As they come across the line, 17.35.3 now officially for Vilskut. 4.22.7 on that penultimate mile. Vilskut was 14th at the World Cross or World Championships in the 10,000 meters in Budapest last year. He's just really coming in. He's got a 13.02 5K PB. So he really does have that speed to turn it on in the final stages here. And I know that a lot of these guys know that. They know he's one of the fastest, if not the fastest 
man, I believe, over 5,000 meters in this race. You look at the team scores now populating as the fourth member of the Hoka NAZ Elite team still is Olin Hacker. He gets across the line in sixth position, but 30 seconds behind the leader kind of reflects what we've seen in terms of a hot pace at the front. Mohammed, a uh, look on his face makes it seem like those hay bales seem a lot taller than they were on the previous four visits around this race course as he's beginning to fade here in the latter stages of the race. So Vilskut still with the lead, trying to hold off the defending champion Edwin Kurgat and Charles Hicks is lurking there in third ahead of Wesley Kip two as they come down this what we call sort of the back stretch of the course as they'll weave their way around those vintage aircraft for the final time. Yeah, about three and a half, four minutes to run. You know, time is not a factor in cross country. A lot of people talk about it, but any top cross country athlete will say, throw the time out the door. They need to just focus on the race at hand. And that's what we're seeing up front here. We're seeing the defending champion go after Vilsgut, who maybe has on paper the faster leg turnover, but really their PBs are quite similar. And they are both kind of getting ready for that final, final kick of this race. Yeah, it just seems like they press the gas now a little bit and getting themselves away from Kip 2 and Hicks, who have held together very well. Now Kip 2 into third, so now he's trying to cover that move. A little look over the shoulder by Vilskut, realizing he's now down to just this battle with Kurgat for the moment. The rain is coming down. You can see the wind now picking up with those flags blowing into their face. They're going to see that wind again when they make the turn for home. And we'll get a little bit of a uh, break on the wind here as they kind of do this U-turn. They do kind of this sweeping S over the last half mile of the course. But Bildskut now still looking very comfortable leading in the closing stages of this Brooks Men's 8K. Well, Bildskut has not raced or he has raced this fall, excuse me, Kurgot has not. On the women's side, we saw the woman that was has not raced this fall beat the ladies that have. So maybe that doesn't matter here in cross country, but Vilskut is trying to put a little distance on right here. South Africa now with a couple of strides ahead of the defending champion, Kurgot. Kurgat's got to dig deep right here, close that gap up, get ready to get up on his shoulder if he can. Otherwise, right now, I think Adrian Vilskut looks good. I mean, he looks great. He's He is going to the arms a little bit, but he has, like I said, that compact form, which is so good on the cross country course. Little energy. We don't want to use any more energy than we have to. Making that final turn has to get around one of the other runners here, but now in full stride and with the finish line in sight, Adrian Vilskut looking like he's going to close in on a cross champs victory. Edwin Kurgat trying to hold off Hicks and Kip to fourth second, but now in splendid isolation is the 25-year-old Adrian Vildskut, the South African, by way of Florida State, now up in Flagstaff with Hoka NAZ Elite. One more look of the shoulder, and now a full arm celebration as he takes the cross championship. Final mile there, 432-3 for Vilskut as he congratulates Charles Hooks and some of his teammates as well. Great run by this group of five up in front, Carey. But Adrian had the uh, had the extra gas in the tank, and over that final what quarter mile or so, he just has started to stretch away that lead and won confidently here, traversing the 8K in 22.07. And still waiting, now getting some of the uh, rest of the field in as 
You can see Olin Hacker has come through finally as he finishes in sixth, 22-58-3. So, Vilskut, 51 seconds ahead of Hacker, just showing what kind of pace we had here up at the front of the race, Kerry. Yeah, and as we said, coming into these races, you never really know where the athletes are coming from. Are they just coming off of their break, only have about a month behind them? What, where, Where's the background? But I guarantee you, after racing here, they're going to go home, and they're going to be better athletes before it. You know, they're going to figure out how to go from here, what they need to do, how their body's holding up, all of that fun stuff. So this is just a great start to hopefully an exciting year for all of them. And it will be confirmed here after the rest of the field gets across the line, but we'll call it unofficially official, if I can make up terms in the middle of a race, that Hoka NAZ Elite will win on the team side for the men. So they sweep the men's and women's races. You see the scores there, 10 points, as they have a perfect score, one, two, three, and four for their racers today as they come to Austin and have an impressive performance here, led by the winner on the men's side, who's down at the finish line with Des Linden. Des? Adrian, we were just talking off camera about that last uh, mile there. You are tucked in pretty much all day. You said with a mile to go, you really wanted to make your move. Um, what was that like? And tell us your strategy. Yeah, um, so our plan for our team was just to go out pretty hard, keep it, uh, keep it, uh, uh, um, honest keep it honest and so we just went out hard and I was just trying to see how it feels uh, running under 430 for the first mile just to see how, how the course is and how I felt and I thought okay it's a pretty good it's, it's rainy but it's not terrible and so we just I just tucked in there see how long I could go but make sure when the pace was starting to slow down in the middle of the race I was just making sure to push it a little bit just to keep it up there because I think that's my strength and uh, coming around for the last two laps I thought okay this is my chance it was tough because obviously the competitors are fierce and there's a few guys that's, you know, really tough. And I was like, if I want to win this race, I need to make a move at least from two miles just to make it honest from there, but then still have enough to really go after the last, the last mile. And I knew even Edwin Kurgard last year, that's what he did. Like, he was just trying to show the, like, the last mile and just really push it. And I thought, if I even going to break him, I have to do that in a, in a double degree, you know. So from two miles, and then when I get the last mile, I do the same. And I just, I just never look back. That's awesome. You look super strong coming in. You're getting ready for the Olympic 10K. What's the rest of the season look like? How does this factor in? Uh, I'm looking to do, God willingly, I'm looking to do a 5K indoors, okay. hopefully in Boston, and then definitely trying to prepare for the 10, in the 10K in March. Uh, I'm, I don't look quite a lot ahead of that, but I will definitely try and get a Diamond League before the, uh, before, uh, the Olympics. So, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> You got a team victory today as well. It seems like we haven't had the full final results yet, but uh, are you going to go celebrate with the boys? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We came here, and we just wanted to get the win, even besides, like, individual titles. We really just wanted to, and that's why you see, like, three of us at least was all the way up there until, the, like, the last two mile and a half or mile. So we really wanted to make sure, even before in any individual title, that we secure the team title, which was the main purpose for this event and so I think we came out on top which I'm really grateful for and I'm really proud of the boys and we're definitely gonna celebrate even just a little bit although it's just early in the season yeah. but yeah I'm proud of the boys absolutely congratulations yeah, thank have you a so good much. one yeah. thanks very much Des good to hear from our winner as some of the uh, additional racers here on this rainy November day in Austin as they wrap up their race here at the 2023 cross champs what strikes you from the uh, the comments from adrian there Kerry? i just loved it i could have listened to him all day i mean just excited to hear that he has his i think his trials in march so he's looking towards that he wants to get a fast 5k in but just fun to hear the team tactics as well i mean he he gave such a great post-race interview i wish all of our athletes would especially on a broadcast like this where we have the time to hear from them i mean this is what it's all about supporting our athletes and and seeing them excited. It was fun to hear the excitement in his voice. Continue to keep a camera on this finish line so you can see some of the uh, athletes coming across the line. Maybe you tuned in. That was Luke Bone from Born to Run. Again, Born to Run, one of the uh, Texas-based 
training groups. Graham Bowles just wrapping up a junior at St. Stephen's Episcopal in Austin. Some of the high schoolers getting a chance to run with their elite aspirational athletes on the course here in Austin, Texas today. You see the unofficial team scores with Railroad Athletics finishing second overall with 45 points. Born to run finishing in third. Yeah, pretty fun for them to be able to toe the line with the athletes that they maybe have looked up to or heard about. I mean, even seeing Mike McManus with Hoka, he was running around. He was an old athlete. Now he's in the industry, and it's just fun to see a lot of different people down in Austin getting after it, either racing or, or at the convention itself and, and having fun. Well, and even if you're not going to win the race, David Mannix of Bat City, an Austin-based runner, will still celebrate and sprint to the finish line. Nice way to wrap up his 8K performance here in Austin.